Hello, my name is Véronique Dubos. I'm a Southern researcher, PhD student, and also the scientific coordinator of the project of Arctic charm monitoring in Kangaskog. It's an Inuit-led project by Noah Ituk, president of the Yanguvigak, the local association of hunters and fishers. He was supposed to record the presentation with me, but unfortunately, at the time of recording, there is a major COVID outbreak. Um, so, as Noah is also the mayor of Kangirsuk, he was not able to do the recording. Hopefully, he will be present uh, to answer the question after the presentation. So, I will present the project in two parts. First, there will be a video of the summer field work when we tagged Arctic char. And in the second part, I will present how we filled the funding proposal and how the project was planned and the fieldwork conducted and why it was uh, uh, successful. Kengiasuk is an Inuit community in Nunavik, in the Ungava Bay. And there is a large lake named Tassirhyorzik or Virgin Lake near the community where thousands of Arctic char are entering during the fall season. They spend the winter in fresh water in the lake, but nobody can find them they disappear. Even the elders have no idea where they are. They reappear in late spring and people can fish them. So the main part of the project consists in discovering where the Arctic char are hiding in winter. And the idea was to tag some fish with acoustic transmitters to find where they hide, but ultimately also why they hide, if there are some specific characteristics of the environment. It was not an easy logistic, especially to bring the canoe to the lake because there was no road. So they had to be really resourceful. They pulled the canoe with a hamutek, a sled, through the rocks. They managed finally to do it to the lake, but the sled died just when they arrived. We installed two camps, one at the lake and one at the tagging area where the fish are entering the river. At each high tide, there were a batch of fish coming from the sea and waiting to climb the waterfall to go to the river upstream and join the lake a few kilometers away. We were waiting for the high tide to catch the fish at the feet of the waterfall. As you can hear, there was a lot of motivation to catch them, but unfortunately we were a little bit early in the migration. We have also had to improve our strategy. We broke several deep nets, but finally we managed to catch them. To install the tag, we put each fish in a bin filled with anesthetic to let them sleep. And after about 10 minutes, the surgery could start. The surgery to install the tag lasted about two to three minutes. The tag was inserted inside the abdomen of the fish and two stitches was done to close the opening. Once the surgery was done, the fish was released in the river upstream the waterfall so that we didn't catch them again. The fish was placed in a natural recovery basin in calm water until they could recover completely. After an hour, they were uh, strong enough again to swim upstream the river and to go in the current. 
To receive the signal of the fish tag, we had to install acoustic receivers in the lake. So we put 11 receivers in the large lake, Tassiriwarosik, and we will install two other receivers in the small upstream lakes. Uh, we will wait for the winter to install them because the access was too difficult this summer. This is how they look before setting them in the lake. We had a great motivated team, especially the three students, Aina, Silesi and Victoria, and really good guides and Noah participating. Uh, we were two southern researchers and several other people that helped us. So now for the second part of the presentation, I will explain how the project was planned from the funding uh, to the fieldwork and uh, why it was successful. Noah and I know each other for about two years now as I'm doing my PhD on Arctic char habitat and I have done fieldwork and interviews in Kangersuk so it was easier to start the process of a new project. So when I saw the funding proposal of the Inuit research program, I just advertised it to Noah and he decided to try to get the funding. He planned the research subject, which is the tagging of Arctic char, but uh, also a community-based monitoring program. I filled the form of the proposal because it was technical, but uh, Noah and another person fed me with the Inuit way of doing the project and how to respect traditional knowledge, which is a major criteria for the project. And there had been several exchanges to fill the proposal just to make sure that we understood the same methodology and that eventually we got the funding. So now how the project was planned. Noah was in charge of the project planning and logistic and I was in charge of the scientific and technical planning with the acoustic tag. I partnered with the, the specialized biologist, Carol Angelis. Noah was also in charge of explaining the project to the community to get approval and support and also involvement. At this stage, it was decided to tag only 10 fish because many people were sensitive to the fish well-being and 10 individuals was an acceptable compromise. Now, why did it work well? First of all, it was all Inuit-led decisions in a context and environment that Inuit know better than anyone, in a way of what we are going to do, how we are going to do it, who will be involved, and this improved the participation and the motivation of the participants. It was a real teamwork. Every participant in the project was actively involved and decisions were collective. We were two southern researchers and we didn't interfere in the way of doing things. We were here to inform with the scientific process but not to decide, although I have been involved in the discussion from the beginning of the project. And we learned together a lot on scientific things with the surgery and the tag, but above all on Inuit culture. And of course, we had a lot of fun which helped to bring motivation. Thanks to the partner and the funding program. If you want to know more on a project, we have a Facebook page, Arctic Char Monitoring in Kangasuk. Thank you.